What is up, Dino Brethren? It is your boy Kid Rex, and I am finally back with another video. I know it's been months and months since I've uploaded on this channel. I am I apologize. Where were you when I needed you, nigga? I've been on the other channel uploading and streaming. For some reason, I just haven't been able to upload on this channel. But we're back. We're back. And I'm glad to be back. Uh, I'm going to try a lot better to work on both channels. But just so you know, if I'm not uploading on this channel, I'm uploading on the other channel. And the other channel, for those of you who don't know, is Kid Rex Gaming. So I'll be doing exclusively on that channel gaming videos. Whether it's me, you know, doing uploads or streaming. So if you haven't subscribed to that channel, go ahead and do it now, you know? Yeah, support your boy on the other channel as well as this one. But yeah, uh, today we are back with the new year, 2023. And today I'm going to be doing a Dragon Ball ranking video. Today I will be doing a ranking of Dragon Ball protagonists. My, my five favorite Dragon Ball protagonists. So this ranking will not include any antagonist or any fusions. So for those of you that are looking for that, that will be in a different video. But for now, we're just doing some of my favorite protagonists. Alright? Before I start this ranking, make sure you guys hit the like button, share and subscribe, and also hit the notification bell just in case you are getting notified of when your boy uploads. Alright, to start off this list, number five, it is a tie for me between Android 17, Krillin, and Vegeta. What? What the fuck? Let me explain. So it was hard for me personally to pick between these three because I like them all the same, you know, at, at the same level. But uh, I, I, let me explain my reasoning of why I like each one of these characters, right? First off, Android 17, when he was first introduced in Z, I liked him as an antagonist. Thought he was really cool. Uh, of course, his fight with uh, Piccolo is one of my favorite fights in all of Dragon Ball. series uh, and to see how much he's matured in super you know now that he has his own family and takes care of uh, an island full of animals and then the way he did work in the tournament of power he has truly become a good character bro and I feel like he's underrated honestly uh, you know hopefully we get to see more of him in the future but you never know with Dragon Ball you know <laughs> That might be the only art that we see him do work. We'll see. But uh, yeah, Android 17 definitely is a good character. Uh, and he's cool on the games too. So, you know, hey, if you haven't fought with him on the game. Yeah, you try him out. He's a special fighter. You know, he, he's pretty quick. He's pretty quick. To go from like this destructive teenager to like this like calm, patient adult who can still, you know, be you know entertaining or whatever be funny he's definitely developed into a good character bro so shout out to android 17 next crew Krillin is the OG character. He's been there from OG Dragon Ball. He's been in Z. In GT, he wasn't. He was only there just to. Uh, <coughs> 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 
And GT was only in there for like a little bit and, you know, he was old as fuck. So, I, I mean, I don't really count GT. But in Super, he actually did a little bit of work also in the Tournament of Power. Uh, again, shout outs to Krillin. Great, uh, great side character. To me, Krillin's hilarious. I feel like he adds to the comedy portion of Dragon Ball and he does very well. I think that Krillin is actually underappreciated because we all know, you know, everybody likes to laugh at him, especially when he gets his ass beat. But, you know, again, he can fight. It's just that he's fighting against these, like, god level beings now. It's like Krillin is only human. He ain't got no transformation. He ain't got no, uh, he can't fuse with nobody. He's only human and he still, you know, put himself in harm's way in order to protect his family and his friends. So, Krillin is a great dude. And also, he got the baddest, one of the baddest wives in Dragon Ball, you know, Android 18. Wow. So, shout out to him, man. You know, honestly, Krillin, <laughs> Krillin's doing pretty well for himself. You know, he got him a baddie. He got him a, a, a cute little daughter. And, you know, he got some of the strongest friends in the universe. I mean, he good. He is good. Krillin was always enjoyed with me from day one, uh, and even though he's not strong enough, of course, like a Goku and Vegeta, it's always entertaining to see him on screen, at least for me. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but I, I, I mess with Krillin, so, you know, that's just me, though. And finally, we get to Vegeta. I'm gonna say this. Back when I was a kid, I did not like Vegeta. Huh? At all. I thought he always irritated my ass, man. I really couldn't stand him. Whenever he got his ass beat, I would I would be laughing. Because I'll be like, ha ha, you deserved it. You talk too much trash. You know? That's how I felt about him. And you know, he I he made so much selfish decisions and he was just so arrogant and just so freaking cocky when he got humbled i was entertained by that i'm still kind of entertained by that no lie but uh in super he's definitely a lot better uh he still talks trash here and there but now he's understanding he can't be that old vegeta no more he to me is a better person not just as like a you know a fighter but He's a better family man now. You know, he actually cares about his children, unlike what he did in Z. Uh, and you can see that he cares about his wife, especially after Beerus slapped, <laughs> slapped Boma in uh, Battle of Gods. So I can understand why a lot of people like Vegeta or have him as his as their very favorite character. He was never personally my favorite character, but I would say he has the potential to be closer to the top five favorite protagonists because I can't see at this point Dragon Ball without Vegeta even though they've had you know they you know he was never an OG so you know <laughs> so I know he wasn't there you know from the start but like it's hard to picture him now with you know picture Dragon Ball without Vegeta so shout out to Vegeta you know and if he's your favorite character you know that's what's up is not my favorite character uh, he will be you know around that five spot now if I had to pick one like I couldn't have them three tied I would probably go with Krillin I I probably go with Krillin but again you know if I could keep them all tied I would all tied at number five so 17 Krillin and Vegeta are ranked number five Number four, we got Gohan. Gohan, son of the world's strongest warrior. My dad taught me not to be scared of bullies like you. Awaits the day his true power will be realized. Super Saiyan blood runs through his veins. With each new battle, his powers are growing. 
Dragon Ball Z. Weekdays at 5.30. Power off. Only to Bobby. Now, Gohan has had him at a little development also. He went from like this little crybaby Saiyan that would rage out to like this, you know, this calm and, uh, you know, intelligent and just like kind-hearted adult. Like he, <laughs> he went through a little process. Everybody remembers his best moment, which was in the Cell Saga, when he first turned Super Saiyan 2. That was like a godlike moment. That was one of the best moments in the series. Uh, that's probably, I think that's the one moment that made a lot of people into Gohan fans. And then, but he also has had his lows too. Uh, I think that's the thing about Gohan that you know makes me put him at number four is that even though he has his highs, he also has his lows. It's hard. <laughs> It's hard for me to have him at number one because like he he's had some great moments, but he's also has some moments that like what is what is this? No, why? You know, uh, everybody remembers Tracksuit Gohan. That was like a you know a low ball moment. I think he did work in the Tournament of Power. I, I think his work in the Tournament of Power is unappreciated, especially in the manga. In the manga, he I think he does a lot more work. Or he, you know, he has like bigger feet, and um, yeah, Gohan, Gohan is great, man. I think he's definitely top five for me. The, um, at number four, that's why I got him at a number four spot. Uh, and if y'all saw the superhero movie, I think he was doing work in that movie also. And hopefully, we get to see more of him in the future, especially with this new transformation that he has now. I think Gohan. I also love his relationship with uh, Piccolo. His relationship with Piccolo is honestly just great. You know what I'm saying? That's probably why everybody would be calling Piccolo like his real father. Um, you know, but he, lo he loves Goku also. So it's just that he's got more moments, I feel like, with Piccolo than he does with Goku, in my opinion. So yeah, I think Gohan is a great, is a great character. Uh, you know, he's changed over the years. Like I said, you know, and you can see that transformation from the Saiyan Saga, the Namek Saga, you know, Cell, Boo, and then in Super, like he's he's come a long way. But rest assured, when he's trained, oh yes, he can throw hands. <laughs> and, I, and I think that's what people get irritated about is that when he doesn't train, like he's kind of trash or like kind of average. But when he does train, he can go off. That's why people want him to stay trained. But it's like. Let the man live his life, man. He ain't gonna be as consistent as Goku and Vegeta. He's not like a natural fighter like they are. So, yeah, Gohan will be ranked number four for me. Coming in at number three, Piccolo. Piccolo, a man divided. A link between two worlds. His power alone could save the Earth. Unreal! When enemies come calling, bring it on. He's happy to oblige. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Weekdays at 5.30. Power up. Only to Nami. Now, Piccolo, to me, I know it's gonna be controversial. Is a better side character than Vegeta. Ah, I, I know that's controversial. I know that's controversial. But I've always vibed with Piccolo more than I have with Vegeta. Like I said again, like you know, Piccolo, just like Vegeta, used to be a villain. And to see how he has changed over the years, uh, you know, sacrificing himself for the son of his enemy. And also, also, you know, helping his enemy defeat like a bigger threat, you know, against Raz, you know, uh, you know, going back to Namek, re rediscovering who he is as as a Namek, a Namekian. 
and just like being able to like be one of Earth's defend main defenders, even if he's not a Saiyan, he will always be first up to help them out whenever there's a new threat. And I love that about Piccolo. Piccolo is also the world's greatest babysitter. He took care of Gohan for a period, built in the trunks for like a day, <laughs> and in this weird movie, we see him training Pan. So this man is the world's greatest babysitter. Shout out to Piccolo, bro. And if it wasn't for that, like that power gap, I I definitely enjoyed it. You know, I, once upon a time, Piccolo was the, the the rival to Goku before Vegeta came into the picture. And uh, I don't know if Piccolo still feels like he's a rival to Goku in some, some way, shape, or form, but. Like in the early days, it was Piccolo before Vegeta. And like I said again, he was in, you know, my, one of my favorite fights in the series, Piccolo versus 17. Fire fight. One of the best fights in the series. So he's already goaded off of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, and also, he was included in another fight in the OG Dragon Ball. Him and Goku in the, uh, the third world tournament. Yeah, that was who. If you haven't seen that fight, y'all gotta check that out because that shit is fire. That's fire. Um, but yeah, man, Piccolo, I enjoy more, uh, enjoy more than um, Vegeta personally. But uh, you know, I'm gonna let y'all, <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all give me y'all thoughts on that in the in the comments down below. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah. It is Future Trunks. Not to be confused with current Trunks. He's okay, I guess. But Future Trunks was my second favorite protagonist in the series. Uh, just his intro alone made him so cool, so dope with the purple jacket, the little, uh, you know, bone haircut or whatever. Like, the way he sliced, when I first saw him, the way he sliced up Frieza. And then just like obliterated King Cole was so cool to me. And then I, I like his personalities also because it's like you can tell he's like so humble and just like so shy or whatever. It's just like this man, <laughs> this man, even though he's the son of Vegeta, spoiler alert, even though he's the son of Vegeta, he acts to me nothing like Vegeta. And I fucks with that. I, it's crazy how I love Vegeta's son way more than Vegeta himself. That I, <laughs> that's that's just crazy to me. But uh, I think Trunks Trunks is definitely a great character, man. Especially when you, if you look at his uh, backstory, or, you know the history of Trunks. Oh man, that's a sad moment. One of the saddest moments in uh, in Dragon Ball as a whole. And whether it was in Z or in Super, like. He's definitely was struggling in his timeline, bro. Like, you can't help but feel for him because it's like, man, he can't he can't catch a break. Like, even when he gets rid of the androids, a whole nother threat comes in, and things are still terrible for everybody. They can't rebuild because he keep getting destroyed. <laughs> he can't handle them alone because you know these are like godlike beings. But yeah, I think Trunks. Is definitely a great character and also another great thing about him is is that he does not waste time to me um, he gets shit done he's not you know waiting for you to power up so you can you know so he can get a better fight or whatever he, he's not going to like 
fall for you know fall for you know this 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 monologue from the antagonist where he'll the antagonist will convince you to let him get away or whatever. Trunks is going to annihilate you before you get, you know, before you can initiate whatever you're trying to do. That's why I fucked with Trunks. He gets shit done. Trunks is highly, highly goaded. One of the best characters in Dragon Ball as a whole. So shout outs, shout outs to the Capsule Corp. Prince. <laughs>already can see number one obviously is the boy Goku Goku the world's strongest defender of humanity when the earth is in jeopardy he's its greatest champion I know the odds are against me but if there's a way to win I'm gonna find it Dragon Ball Z Weekdays at 5.30. Full power. Only two dollars. I mean, nothing really has to be said, but I'm going to say this, you know. Goku, to me, is the most entertaining on screen from day one, even now. Uh, no matter what iteration of Goku it is, whether it's Kid Goku from OG or, you know, him from Z, GT, even Super. I know a lot of people hate Super Goku, but I still think he's entertaining, especially in like, you know, you know, when, when he's fighting. Because again, he's still the same Goku when he's fighting, but I think, you know, they up the comedy for him and it kind of like, you know, drives people off, but I still love him. Goku to me is the GOAT. He has some of the best uh, moments in the series, of course, being the, the pro, uh, you know, the MC. I love the way that, you know, he doesn't necessarily want to kill people he just wants a great fight and uh, I think that's what makes him so pure is just like you know he's not really doing it for ill intentions you might call it selfish a little bit but like basically that's what drives him is a great fight and once you understand that you know it makes sense why he he's always searching for like the next greatest thing you know um, I think Goku gets misrepresented as like a bad father slash well, you could say that he's kind of a bad husband, but being a bad father, I don't know. I think he's actually a decent father. He's actually really good, to, you know, for saying standards, if you really think about it. But I think he's actually a decent father. I think that Goku, for what he means to the series, for what he means to the characters in the series, is just so tremendous. It's just like, I can't think of Dragon Ball without Goku. I couldn't. I wouldn't be able to replace Goku with anybody else, whether it's in a series or from another series. I can't picture Dragon Ball without this man right here. Goku, to me, day one has always been my favorite. Uh, I always love watching him fight. It, it And just to see how popular he is, like they, they got him in parades. I think they even got a holiday for him in Japan. It's just such a great thing to think about, bro. It's <laughs> you gotta love it, man. You gotta love Goku, bro. I, 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 Goku is by far one of my favorite characters of all time. In fiction, you know, he's one of the reasons why I love Dragon Ball so much. I can't wait to see more Dragon Ball in the future, and you know, play the games also. You know, playing as one of my favorite characters, Goku. Like I said. Is the undisputed goat for me, um, but yeah, that's my ranking one through five. Like I said again, number five, Krillin, Vegeta, Android 17 is number five. Number four is Gohan. Number three is Piccolo. Number two is Trunks, and the goat himself is number one. So comment down below. Let me know your top five protagonists. Um, <laughs> I know this is kind of a long video depending on how I edit it, but yeah, hopefully y'all understand why I like, you know, these characters in that certain order, but like, let me know your ranking in the comments, man. and uh, make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video, you know, hopefully I can do the antagonist soon and, 
you know, my some of my favorite fusions. But yeah, that'll be another video. So yeah, peace y'all. Have a good day. Your boy is out. I should explain to you exactly what it is that I do. <laughs> So, 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 so,